Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. And thank you for coming today for this really, really important program. Welcome to today's screening of Black Nations, Queer Nations. My name is Laron Brooks. I'm the curator of the Gettys uh, African American Art History Initiative. Today's program is sponsored by the Getty Research Institute's AHI, African American Art History Initiative, and our partners from Columbia, Columbia University's uh, Department of African American and African Diaspora Studies, and the Institute for Research in African American Studies there at Columbia. Launched in 2018, the African American Art History Initiative focuses on the history, practices, and cultural legacies of artists of African American and African diasporic heritage. Through preserving archival documentation of these artists, supporting scholars, institutional collaborations, and programming, AHI is working to provide a more robust and accurate history of American art, one that can shift the narrative of global culture. On to today's program. Shari Freelow's experimental documentary, Black Nations, Queer Nations, chronicles the groundbreaking 1995 conference on lesbian and gay sexualities in the African diaspora. The conference brought together an array of dynamic scholars, activists, artists, and cultural workers, including, including Essex Hem uh, Hemphill, Kabina Mirza, Barbara Smith, Isaac Julian, and M. Jackie Alexander to interrogate the economic, political, and social situations of diasporic LGBTQIA peoples. This special screening of the film, followed by a discussion uh, uh, featuring the film's uh, director, uh, Shari Frilo, and Columbia University's own Dr. Jafari Sinclair Allen, will allow us to once again explore the identities, culture, and politics of black queer peoples both in history and the now. Speaker bios. Shari Freelo is an artist, filmmaker, and chief curator of the New Frontier program at the Sundance Film Festival. Shafari Sinclair Allen is professor of African American and African Diaspora Studies in the Department of African American and African Di uh, Diaspora Studies at Columbia University where he is the director of the Institute for Research in African American Studies and editor-in-chief of the seminal, the seminal uh, journal Souls, a critical journal for, uh, of black politics, society, and culture. Following their discussion, we will have a Q&A. Well, you'll get the opportunity to ask them questions and start a group dialogue inspired by the film. And after the conversation, please join us in the lobby for a light reception. But before we begin, a word of thanks to everyone involved in bringing this event to you today, our Associate Director, Kara Aldridge, Aldridge uh, this be, this be uh, Ginsler, and our events uh, and AV staff. Finally, a little housekeeping. Cell phones off, if you can, before the film. And the video will be posted to the Getty Research Institute's YouTube channel. What's over? Now, without further ado, please enjoy Black Nations, Queer Nations. Thank you. surprises me how emotional I am at the end. And so I often need a breath, I'm gonna suggest. And one of the reasons that, that we'll talk about that the film uh, is, thank you, that the film uh, brings up so much for me is, aha, is this like this? I don't know what those hand signals mean. It means that my, 
mic was not on? Yeah, I'm from Queens. I should have said, check one, check two. My mic sounds nice. There it is. My mic now sounds nice. Uh, is that uh, as evergreen as the film may be, and I've learned, uh, one of the other things is that I start counting the litany of people we've lost. And uh, for uh, the purposes of housekeeping here to not wet the floor with Prosecco, uh, we've already done this outside to, uh, to do a small libation, but I just want us to take just a moment of breath together to recognize uh, the work and the lives of the people who are no longer here. And so thank you, thank you very much. Uh, I'm not gonna say much and we are going to have a short conversation before we open it up to a conversation with all of us. But first, I want to introduce myself. My name is Jafari Sinclair Allen, and I'm the director of the Institute for Research in African and African American Studies at Columbia, where I'm also a professor of African and African Diaspora Studies in the Department of African and African Diaspora Studies. To make that quick, we usually say AAADS and IRAS. Uh, and uh, perhaps more importantly, um, I am a, a student of this film. I'm someone who's, uh, whose intellectual life and political life was shaped in that moment um, and that has sort of uh, constructed my own commitments in those areas. Um, and I'd like to say publicly, I'm someone who was at the conference who Sherry did not put in the film. <laughs> and so we'll talk about that later, about those people who somehow uh, get left out, the people who... <laughs> the hardworking activist. At that point, I was actually, I had uh, dropped out of undergrad, uh, don't tell my parents, uh, and was working as, uh, as an activist in New York City uh, and was so happy to be uh, at the conference in that moment as so many of us were. So thank you to you, Sherry. Thank you to our friends at uh, the Getty Center, to Thisbe and to Kara and to Laron and to Dulcinea for making this possible. Uh, and thank you to all the folks in this film. Uh, before I say too much, I want to just start by asking uh, you, Sherry, how you feel in this moment. Uh, 30 years later, Sherry was uh, 12 when she uh, directed this film. Uh, so could you say something about being such a, such a, a, a young filmmaker and what this means for you at this, this moment? I guess I was a very active youth. <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's very eerie to watch this movie and feel like it was made today. Outside of the technology, I mean, the technology is painfully like, ah, wow, you know, it doesn't look good. Um, but that the issues and even the language are so, they vibrate directly in our times and 30 years later. So um, it's, it's um, well, I, I'm really glad I made the movie, you know, and I, and I feel like, I feel very proud um, that I was a part of that conference and, you know, um, participating as a cultural worker uh, to how the conference, the composition of it and also the filming of it and um, working very closely with Kathy Cohen and um, to really, you know, that kind of like collaboration of cultural sensibility and keen political sensibility to, to, to be able to do that and working with Louis Erskine rest in peace, who edited this film, um, who was just amazing and, and gave it that flow, that, that legibility. Um, really proud of the effort. Um, and, uh, and then I recently I've been surprised that this film had been renting, uh, like had a resurgence of, of, of people, you know, younger people watching it. And then I had a godson come up to me and said, wow, I just saw your movie. I was like, how did you see my movie? It's not even in DVD. 
Um, you know, so, so that as like a, a, as a filmmaker makes me feel proud. But the fact that it's so applicable now um, is, it's, it's not a disappointment of the film and the filmmaking, the effort, but the, of our times and how um, some of the things that, you know, the conference like Jackie Alexander and all these people were calling for and we were feeling that at that time that we were, they were, we were stepping up, you know, uh, that, it, that we're still, that we're actually looking, facing problems compounded. Uh, it's, 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 it's heavy on my heart. Um, it makes me want to really push for being kind to myself and to, to our communities for the part that we did step up to, for the parts that we did not step up to, for the parts that we have the opportunity to step up to. You know, it is a different time, and I'm really happy that, you know, some of the, the, the people, I think, you know, the people in this conference, we're here still, like, that, 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 those sensibilities of what, what takes place on the emotional terrain, the affective terrain, the, you know, the, the personal, the spirituality terrain that I think Jackie Alexander was really getting at, how to scale, you know, understanding a political reality and then how to step up to it. Uh, um, yeah, just to, 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 to be, to hold space and give permission uh, to activate that terrain, maybe more now than, than as it was opened in 95, now it is called for urgently today. Right, I mean, I think that one of the things that, that I've learned teaching the film over the last maybe 16 or 17 years, I taught it as um, an archival piece or the piece for people to think about uh, black queer studies, for example, or the, 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 the outlining of what we now know of as intersectionality or black queer movement. And what I learned talking to my students is that it is evergreen. And it's been heartbreaking for me, <laughs> class after class, screening after screening for young people to say, this is actually uh, unfinished work, as Colin would say, um, and to note how urgently today this is unfinished work, which is why we've been screening the film. Uh, the first uh, sort of series of screenings was in London in October. Uh, we've been in places that I wouldn't have imagined, for example, as a student at Morehouse, I would not have imagined that I'd be screening the film at the AUC at Spelman College, which we did last, last, last month. Uh, but we've been doing this in order to restart the conversation because we're holding black nations queer, black, and I do that all the time, I have to say. I noticed just last week that I have been adding S to the black nation. It has everything to do with my own research and my own Pan-African understanding that I can't leave black nation alone. And I've been saying black nations, queer nations, and I'll, I'll correct that. Uh, but that we've been, we are going to do uh, black nation, queer nation 30 in 2025 at Columbia University um, in August. So look out, look out for that. Uh, because we realize that this work is unfinished and there may not have, have been a moment uh, since 1995 when it was more urgent to re-examine this and to do this work. And so thank you again. It, it reminds me of what Jackie said uh, Quoting Audrey, quoting uh, Toni Morrison's uh, Setha when she said that uh, making yourself free is one thing, but then laying claim to that freedom is another. And so there is, there's been tremendous work that's happened over the last 30 years. And as you see in the film, that uh, in the opening montage, the folks say, our our cultural and political work has matured, that we have gotten to this point. So that it's at 1995 that people are talking about about 20 years of work, right? Uh, making new paradigms, shifting old ways of thinking, doing work that people hadn't imagined, literally saving each other's lives. And now in 2020, 2025, we realize that that was the freeing yourself part. 
Now the other part about laying claim to that and protecting the ground that we have, uh, that we have won up against tremendous, uh, up against uh, tremendous obstacles internationally, transnationally is quite another and is something that is sort of dynamic, right? Um, so I, I wonder if we shift a bit to sort of the film as a film, um, as, a, as an artistic and cultural object. Uh, can you talk a bit about some, some of the, the formal aspects of it, some of the choices and intentions that you, that you had and how you, how you see that at this moment when you see it again? You know, I, uh, when, I, when I made the movie, uh, I, was, I was questioned a lot about how I used clips mm. to underscore um, points that were made by the conference participants. And, you know, watching it now made me, I, it was definitely the thing to do. It had, it had to, it had to um, have like a cultural vibration. Mm -hmm. You know, and added to the 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 text, I guess, um, or the speeches. I mean, I, it was important, and also, you know, I tried as much as I could to draw from those uh, from, from those who were participants. But then, you know, it was talking about the world, you know, and so. And, and Kathy Cohen was definitely she's like, the Million Man March is coming up. We have to put that in there. Find a way to put it in there. Um, so it was. It was. Uh, it was a lot of. It was a lot of like in terms of filmmaking. It was a lot of fun to make, mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, the, their the opportunity to underscore really articulate um, points of view, and um, and fresh points of view that that put it out there at at you know um, to, to put it out there and and it be kind of like a lone. Or like a lon uh, lonely on the landscape, um, to then be able to bring some of like the music videos and some of Marlon Riggs's films uh, um, to give it that potency, you know, to uh, to to address the body um, uh, was really was really fun, you know. And it kind of and as a filmmaker, as an artist, you know, I, I started out as a as a, a collage artist. Um, specifically because I was interested in being able to put different mediums, different images together that would create something that's larger than the sum of its parts. That I hope that I did that with this because every time I, people ask me, so what is that movie oh, that you made? It's like, well, it doesn't sound good. It sound, it's, I made a documentary of a conference. Mm -hmm. And that just sounds like the most boring thing, you know. Um, but, you know, uh, drawing from the images that embodied the issues, um, you know, that was, that, was, that was really important to do. And it, it also, I think, you know, the, the intersectionality and the, like the, the multiplicity of, of, of workers coming together, uh, it's, it's so important, you know? Like, and, and I, the, what, what I really tuned into uh, of, the, of the conference so many things, but the thing about nationalism was something that, um, that was something that I felt uh, only images could really try to punctuate mm -hmm. and to pierce and to, 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 you know, to break through um, uh, the, 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 the um, I guess the desire at that point. And now, right, you know, at, at this point, maybe, even because there is a, there were successes that came through a national mm -hmm. um, uh, strategy, you know. Just as um, Nat, uh, Samuel Delaney was talking about that, um, but you know, at, at, as Coben Mercer at, seeks to look and remember, it's one of my favorite things, <laughs> like to remember and and look at what's working and what doesn't work and how to move forward that does feel like we, we didn't get there yet, you know? Um, so I, I think that um, to, to talk about stuff is important, um, but to visualize and to develop a visual language and maybe even beyond that, 
you know, to, to develop some kind of affective language around this is, is important uh, to, to, to really kind of create a world that transcends a colonial construct that so powerfully defines us, um, but it's, it's the world that, that we feel like we're inside of and, and must define ourselves as, as opposed to kind of like what Kwame was saying, um, define ourselves on the outside of it, you know, moving into that direction. I guess I'm talking, you know, theoretically and contextually about the film rather than the filmmaking as well, but th there's, there's just so much there and seeing it again, you know, with a, an audience, wow, look at that. <laughs> um, it's, it, it, it reminds me of what I was going for as a filmmaker, trying to, trying to, to bring what, uh, this really important conference and what people were saying and there was not everything got into the movie and not everybody and not everybody, not everybody <laughs> and not everything, you know, like uh, um, Jackie Alexander mm -hmm. talked about eye to eye strategies. Mm -hmm. She's really into this, um, you're working, to, trying to find a way to hold seminars mm -hmm. that were just two people at a time. Mm -hmm. That you would look at each other eye to eye and, and, and speak eye to eye and that that was, that was like the basis of where we needed to go next. You know, I didn't put that in the document. Why didn't I do that? You know, it, but it's, it, it, uh, it, it, was so, it was so rich and I'm so happy that there's this movement now to bring that conference, you know, to iterate it. Um, because we really, we really need it, and you know, I hope that it, it can also have that like multi um, practice and intersectionality, the dis interdisciplinary um, embrace and manifestation, and uh, move, way it moves into the world. Because it, that's that is what our world is at, and if we're going to be talking about finding um, personal and political liberation on a, a, a uh, you know, digital landscape, mm -hmm. um, it, that's gonna be important. It was really, I, it struck me too that, like I ended up, you know, I ended up at Sundance and doing films, and, but then also like ushering in an age of VR, you know, virtual mm -hmm. reality through New Frontier. And so it was really striking to hear Essex talk about virtual reality. On the verge of, cyber on the verge of cyberspace, and, um, and just how, you know, identities are, 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 are negotiated and galvanized and, um, and how humanity continues to unfold on that terrain mm -hmm. is, is something uh, to be thought, you know, it's something to think about moving forward mm -hmm. with how, you know, with this conference and um, re reigniting this conversation and who, who you know, who, who, who gets to participate in it, yeah. how and, and how important that, that terrain is. That's actually one of, one of the questions, uh, one of the questions on our sort of mood board <laughs> for planning is Essex's quote, on the threshold of cyberspace, ellipsis, where we have a question. So we're no longer in the threshold, we're in it. And so how can we in 2025 uh, reflect some of that? And so that's gonna be a, a huge part of this. But it, it's, it's so um, fascinating to hear that you started as a collage artist because I've written about um, I've written about Black Nations, Queer Nation, Black Nation, Queer Nations, the conference, and uh, this film as a collage portrait, because it seems to me that that's that's what you've done, and it's wildly successful, I think, in in that way, because there's so much that we could write about or we theorize. So Jackie Alexander has brilliantly theorized uh, not only transnational feminism but nationalism and the problems with with nationalism, but in this thing, when you can see her in her, you know, in her glory, uh, talk about all of the forms of nationalism for which she has no use, um, or for which have particular uses that we have to interrogate, and then the portrait, or then the archival film of the Christian missionaries burning the juju, and the quote, you know, some of them mourn this and others wonder what is to become of them, right? And so this is that, that longing, right? Also, what is to become of us without older forms of nationalism or connections that do not serve? And again, that's one of, another one of uh, sort of Setha's uh, uh, 
confusions or, or dilemmas, what do you do uh, with the freedom? And so the opportunity that you've taken here to, to theorize in, a, um, in an artistic way is really very helpful for those of us um, who spend our time trying to do this on paper and then realizing that I can you know, teach or do public education, I can talk on and on, right? Um, or I can show a part of this film and people can get it right away, uh, which is one of the reasons why it's so important um, to do a film about a conference, which does sound really, <laughs> it sounds really terrible and nerdy, but uh, now we know uh, the, benefit, uh, the benefit of that. Uh, we want to um, we want to move to a conversation with everyone, uh, but before we do that, I'd like to just ask you a bit more about that threshold of cyberspace, about that moment that Essex uh, talks to us about. And uh, for those of you who don't know, Essex Hempel passed into the ether. He passed away soon after his uh, his appearance on this. Um, on this panel, and so this also captures, uh, I think for me, and I'm sort of a student and scholar of Essex also, that this is the, I think that this is the last public appearance, it's certainly the last one extant on, on videotape that, that I've seen, and so um, for me it's also, um, it's also a warrant to move on, to think about what he said and try to figure out <laughs> how to do it in terms of my work. So what does that mean for you, this, the notion of uh, on the threshold of cyberspace, sitting here now um, and doing the work that you do that's taking us to the very edge of that? Hmm. Uh, you know, at, at, at that time, and it continues to have this uh, quality that is to say, the culture of technology, you know, you know, he was referring to the possibilities. You know, there was there is a utopic promise of technology, and there was a, a real like disruption in the interpersonal dynamics of technology, and um, you know, which could which which was wide open at the time, you know, because. Uh, a lot of the internet was just kind of getting started right at that time, and the none of the rule books or even very little was known about it. Um, those who have engaged had engaged with it at the time was really feeling uh, just this increased functionality uh, to be able to like back at the time I had just started um, working on mix the mix festival, and um, you know we founded a a festival in Mexico and Brazil because of the internet, you know. Um, so, the, you know, him interrogating it in terms of like identity and who he, what kind of liberties he, he was going to find on a terrain that was just being born, that, uh, uh, that when you entered it, no one saw who you were, so that was something that was a kind of terrain that you could could um, dodge a lot of preconceptions. Uh, and it's, you know, there's still some of that in the air, cut to 30, minute, 30 years later, where we have movies like We Met in Virtual Reality. I don't know if you saw this movie. Um, it's on HBO, and it's about uh, a, a number of different kinds of people and communities coming into a uh, place called VR Chat, which is kind of idealized what Essex was talking about. You go into this virtual reality set um, in environments, different worlds where you can de you can determine through your avatar what you look like and how you sound and how people were able to to meet each other in that space and and live life, fall in love, uh, mourn their dead. Uh, in, in a very real human way, you know. So, so the, the, that, that promise of utopia still exists, I think. Um, but we've also seen, like, uh, um, I mean, I guess, the, the way that um, these proprietary platforms uh, 
radiate and and are, are, are I guess the proprietary platforms and how they design these these platforms really like radiate the kind of values, the colonial values, colonial values, national values, um, actually colonial values to create new nationalisms and new um, national structures or reify them in in different ways. Um, and so when, when, I when, I, when I watched Essex in the movie and think about you know, the, the skepticisms around, around the technologies, um, I see both things. And I think it's what's important is that uh, it's, it's really important to, like, to become literate in what these technologies um, offer and how they're being used and the importance of design in terms of what uh, liberatory effect they can have as opposed to constricting effect, um, which you know, a lot of the platforms have that and the way that, and the economies that have been built around the data um, have really been used to, against most people. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That, 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 that's really fascinating. I'm thinking about a, a film that Fatima Jamal is, is currently finishing called No Fats, No Femmes, that, um, and I think that part of the impetus for that film uh, was watching uh, uh, that phrase be bandied about on various platforms, right? Um, and then uh, she takes that um, as a way to, to think about, about fatness and feminists in, in black communities. But, and, and the other part about it, how even even the interrogatives, black question mark, queer question mark, nation question mark, uh, in this film, they are interrogatives. It's for us to really think about and question, and yet it seems on the other hand that all of those terms, even queerness uh, that was so open, those have been rigidified. And so, you know, among theorists, there's, uh, th there's this return question, well, how is it <laughs> that something that we thought of as so capacious and we've come to this. Uh, and so perhaps it is in the technology part of it now that we can reimagine and open that up once again for interrogation and for reimagination. Perhaps so. I mean, it, it, it will take designers to do it. Um, and it will take, you know, I think thinking around uh, like how do you break through the, the, the promise of nationalism? Like when, when you're inside of a, of, a, of a national state and it's hostile, how, how do you n not respond in a way that you're able to pr protect yourself or mm -hmm. to defend yourself? Which is what Delaney was talking about. You know? Very hard to imagine, um, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to imagine a continued liber liberation movement or effort without something of defense system, that's right. you know. So that that's kind of an interesting thing uh, that I think about and would love to hear. Uh, like, what defense systems can technology, uh, you you know, um, give us or can, or designs that we can we can embrace technology in ways that might provide defense around and, and creating safe communities, safe spaces to come together without having to um, identify and double down our investments in a nationalist mm -hmm. state that is in its own uh, definition, um, you know, the, a, a controlled violence in a certain way. That's right. Okay, we, we could do this all night. Um, and so uh, we want to do this for the rest of the time that we have together. together. And so I'm going to invite folks to Take a breath and then, or not, just come on out. Uh, take a breath and join, and join the conversation. Hello, hi, my name is Jale Johanna Bravo. Um, I heard you mention that you are in charge of African studies at Columbia University. And we are living a revolution. Why continue to suppress identity, roots, nationality, origin, and minimize the African community to the color of black, a color associated with pain and struggle? Well, I sit here before you as a person who proudly identifies as black, and I do not 
identified as something of pain and struggle. There's that. Uh, and there's much more to say about that. But one of the things that happens in this film uh, is that Raul Balanquet has this moment when he talks about blackness being reductionist and that black people don't understand metisaje, et cetera, et cetera, and that blackness is not only reductionist, but as you say, associated with pain and struggle. What I find is that my perception and perception of other people, blackness as self-identification is underemphasized. Of course there's pain and struggle, of course. And at the same time, there's a whole lot more. And so my scholarly and political and spiritual sort of uh, centering and intention is to every time that that question is put to me that way to say, wait a minute, not just yet. There's much more to it. And we can talk about that. We can talk that about the more. And also about how that relates to, I'm not sure how that relates to the institution of Columbia, but we can talk. We can talk later. At, at, Okay. Okay. Let's 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 let. I'm going to say one thing, and then we'll go back to the to the thing. I want to invite you to immerse yourself in the literatures on the black diaspora, some of which I've written, by the way. So when you say the black, black color, no one here said only African-American. Actually, I don't think either of us have even mentioned the nationality of African-American. We're actually talking about a more expansive notion of blackness. And what I want to invite everyone to do is to think about and immerse yourself in current black studies that is black studies all over the country. So my first book, please go out and cop that. It's called Benceremos, The Erotics of Black Self-Making in Cuba, where I deal very specifically with this question because the, what you call the sort of, um, what makes the, the separation, the separation is not caused by black people calling themselves black. The separation is, called by anti, is caused by anti-blackness. And we can talk about the rest of this a fuero with a glass of wine or something. Next. Uh, thank you for that question. That was really great and very thought provoking. Um, I wanna say thank you, Sherry. I just have a comment. Um, that was amazing. I'm 39, I was a young child when this came out and seeing uh, the language and the uh, concept of intersectionality expressed in the film, it really just brings it back. It's very galvanizing in a sense. Like I feel like now we're ready to kind of like own that, uh, that identity, right? And I feel like I have to do the work now too as well after having seen that. So thank you, it really is just mind blowing that in the 90s, this was the conversation that was being had, the language that was being used, the concepts that were being discussed, it was certainly outside of the realm of my awareness at that point in my life. And um, I, I can't believe 30 years later, we're still kind of here, but I guess so much has happened, so much has happened to push us back, um, so much has, happen to open us up and I, I just want to thank you again thank you both for this conversation and I think there's a lot of work to do so I'm super excited well, th thank you for that comment um, you know we we're talking a little bit about you know you, you mentioned that in the 90s it was a kind of like a birth of consciousness right think things were opening up kind of for the first time you know they were like Lesbian clubs were just kind of getting to, to started in New York, and it was like one of these wide-eyed moments. Um, 
and we were all feeling it. We were feeling like a sense of power, a sense of community, um, and we were also feeling a sense of like endangerment too. That was, um, and I, I think that uh, at that time we were going, coming, kind of coming out and for ourselves, uh, really needing to to defend that space. Um, so this, so like an embrace of generosity around these different uh, terms, black, nationalism, queer, uh, you know, th these were, it was, it, was, it was enough to like say that this was happening and then go out into the world um, and interrogate some of the, the, the ruptures, which is what they were doing in the, in the conference. But I feel like a sense of generosity now, it is, it is time to add generosity to the conversation because I feel like, um, you know, blackness means so much. And if you are generous and let it sit on the, stand on the table for all of, its, all of its positive qualities, all of its denotations of community and culture, uh, and, and let that live right next to, um, you know, n nationalisms that maybe are about to expire within the black community, uh, you know, just to like, to be able to hold it all, almost like a kind of an interdisciplinary approach to um, letting a community grow and nourishing a community. Um, it, it feels like that, that's gonna be really necessary moving forward. Because uh, otherwise, we're just going to fall. We're, we're falling into what what this conference was uh, warning us about, which is you know nationalisms are going to tear us apart. And if if that's how we're only going to to define our successes along those those demarcations, then we we will just replicate the empire inside of our our social structures, as opposed to just holding the hybridity and the multiplicity in all of these terms, knowing with intention. Not with, um, not not to, um, not with acceptance to what the colonized, what coloni colonizing forces would have us embrace these terms with. I, I think that that's I think that's that's beautifully put. Thank you. I, I agree with all of that. And one of the things when we talked about uh, this moment. Uh, a couple of years ago, we had a, a, a seminar called uh, Lessons from the Long 1980s. And Chandan Reddy, who was part of the, who was, who was uh, a student then, was part of the, the larger organizing committee, talked about the fact that what, the, what this film and no film could capture and what we need to capture is how friendships between people uh, caused a real, those networks created the work. And so it's not necessarily that people decided uh, that I'm going to I'm going to uh, I'm going to stand alongside uh, South Asians because I know this work already, but because they were friends. That uh, that, for example, the Audrey Lord, uh, the the Audrey Lord Center for People of Color Organizing was created by some of the people that you saw here. Um, people who were com as committed to uh, work in black communities as they were to working in indigenous and native communities, as they were to working with South Asian and Asian communities, right? So uh, it, it was, and it is also some of that under the umbrella of blackness. I mean, I, I just, and the thing about defense is also, and I do feel myself a bit defensive because in 30 years, one of the things as a scholar of, of these movements is that I see that black people are asked to give up identification in order to be generous. When my reading of the work is that black people have been expansive and capacious. And that as you can see in this film, if you've watched it as many times as I have, that it is not an all black crowd and no one was turned away and no one was insulted and no one was told you can't be here and no one was told your issues are not important, right? That generosity, that style of generosity that really sort of raised me politically and, and intellectually is precisely what needs to be, I think, expanded in this moment. And I'm also coming from, you know, Columbia 2024, 
when, you know, when I'm at the encampment with my students, my students are every color. And many of those students who, uh, many of those students who were leaders were students who identify as black, black American, Native, uh, black American and Native American, uh, black Latinos, right? Black Caribbean people. And so I will at every opportunity hold up this banner and say, even if it is not my usual sort of laid back, sort of generous way, stop, no, don't reduce blackness. It's about this sort of generosity of uh, uh, this moment is about a way of seeing blackness that is expansive at the same time that historic terms. So for example, I'm a, I'm a professor of African American and African diaspora studies. The, the department was founded in 2019. I'm the first senior person to be appointed to the new department. The Institute for Research in African American Studies that was established by Manning Marable 35, 31 years ago is African American. These are historic, these are historic terms that have very specific meaning, and I'm proud of both terms. For example, I'm also an adjunct, not an adjunct, but um, a member of the executive committee of what is now called the Center for Research in Gender and Sexuality. It used to be called, guess what? The Center for Research of Women, Women's Studies. I happen to be one of the people who think that women's studies is an important category that we should still be working with, but, these, the, the category women's studies does not necessarily mean that we're not talking about trans. It means that you have to have everyone in the room and be willing to have the conversation, to have that generosity. To have a conference called Black Nation, comma, uh, Black Nation, question mark, queer nation, question mark, does not mean that we're excluding anyone who does not identify as black or those issues. It means you've got to be in the room, you've got to be willing to be in the room and have the conversation, even in terms of black leadership. Um, oh, what's the other one? Hi, um, I'm not exactly a scholar or anything like that, so please forgive me if I'm a bit inarticulate, but um, something that I notice uh, as kind of this running thread throughout the film is the centering of the erotic within these communities and in kind of um, constructing uh, communities. Um, and, and, and I'm really struck by the workshop where it's, you know, you have these people talking directly about um, eroticisms and how to integrate that into the work that they do and how to like, the importance of articulating their fantasies and expressing their fantasies. And um, it just seems like, you know, and, and, and this was spoken to in the film too, but it, it seems like now particularly for queer communities and the intersections thereof, there's a real difficulty to integrating eroticism and like a healthy sense of the erotic into like organization and into the crafting of communities. And I was wondering if perhaps maybe you could speak to what forces drive eroticism out of queer community and queer communities um, and if there's like things that we can do to like integrate and reintegrate those things back into a sense of ourselves and the communities that we belong to. We're saying that was a really great question. It's 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 a it's a great question. I wanted to ask you, and perhaps we can we can talk about that later. Um, why you think? this is the case and some examples for this being the case. One of the things that I was watching this again and thinking that uh, the person who had talked about, you know, being, uh, uh, being, strapped, uh, being strapped in, did not know that 30 years from now that they would be on a screen at the Getty Center talking about this, but we, we're, very, we're very, very thankful. Uh, when uh, Ellis Verjaji Jones says, you know, we don't talk about fucking anymore, right? I think that that we that he that he said was academics, and for a lot of things, I blame my I blame I blame academics. That is that perhaps uh, when the work moves outside of uh, 
not necessarily outside of when the work moves into places where people feel that it has to be formalized and in a very particular language, uh, that uh, that piece moves out. Audre Lorde talked about the difference between right be, uh, about the difference between the erotic and the pornographic, and also noted that what she said the white fathers right had told us that we had to separate the erotic from uh, from the intellectual. And I think that what you what we're seeing, um, if if what you observe is true, is another bifurcation that we're we're thinking our way out of this, or we are doing political work or policy outside uh, um, with this. But Audrey, Audrey, and then M. Jackie Alexander in her work tells us, well, you cannot separate these things. And Jackie goes even further to then connect the erotic to the spiritual. Uh, and so I'd love to talk with you and other people about how to not only think this through, but how to make this real in 2025. We thought about, uh, about workshops, about uh, replicating or doing, uh, doing the, uh, the lesbian erotics workshop and other workshops. Uh, during the conference or maybe as an adjunct to the conference. So we'd, we'd love to hear more about that. I mean, your question um, makes me think about, I just came back from New York and I spent some, some time there. And I go there every year, right? And I'd spent a couple of weeks this time. And uh, uh, also I w went out to San Francisco a couple of years ago and noticed that there's like a younger, you know, in, amongst the younger culture, there the sexuality was different. Like the like the the clubs, they weren't glamorous. Everybody looked kind of the same. You know, like um, sort of like de-emphasizing a sexuality. Uh, this time in New York, the kids were sexy again. Like they were they were they were, they were glamorous. Um, even though they, you know, the, the heat wasn't going to each other, but it was at, at least it was like radiating. So there is something also that could be that be, could be connected to, you know, could be connected to the technology, you know, just kind of how uh, how important uh, um, social platforms specifically have played in 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 establishing major discourses, uh, you know, amongst across ages. Um, but there's also something that it, it took time away as well from the body and, um, and de-emphasize. And I see this in the movies too for a long time. The mo the, there was no sex in the movies for a while. And I'm like, what, what happened? You know, what happened? They're starting to come back. And, 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 and it's not lost on me that revolutionary, you know, like uh, people who were uh, being rebels and, and striking and, you know, social upset, that's also happening. So the sexuality is, is somehow in coming back it, it, parallel to these movements. So maybe it has something to do with that as well, you know, those terrains. Is it on? Oh, all right. Um, I had a question earlier, but some of these questions have inspired me to make a particular comment, which is just to say that I think it's, it's very curious and really telling about what your film shows that some of the inheritance maybe genera generationally that we have made for some of the progress that was demonstrated at this conference was to contract back into a more cohered identity of blackness um, where you are kind of trying to keep us open to its capaciousness and theoretically what some of those thinkers were presenting was a more open category. Um, I think we're witnessing firsthand how there's been a return to kind of like re-solidifying blackness and then reducing it to conversations about what colors mean in terms of political progress or if we're making progress based on the association of a color and a skin type. So I find that very curious. I think that's very telling to what then your film inspires because my first question was going to be about more thinking at the time that this film was being created. It seemed like some of the reactions were to very clear pressures that black and queer people or black queer people were feeling about the rise of black nationalism in the form of like the Million Man March or some of the kind of like hyper nationalisms that were still extant from like black, from like the 1970s and black power, et cetera. Um, and so I wonder if you have a reaction or idea about whether or not those, those same types of threats, those, those same types of um, paradigms in blackness still exist in this contemporary age and how black queer people in particular 
are aware of the nationalisms that are creeping within their communities, not as broadly um, as queerness can be defined. I'd love to hear you talk about it because you're in New York. <laughs> um, but there's a, yeah. Nationalism, it feels like how I have been exposed to it just in my days uh, is more focused on the white nationalists coming, coming in, which like strike a very def intense defense mechanism against that. Uh, am, I, am I seeing and feeling a resurgence of black nationalism? against that? I don't know if I am. I kind of feel, I guess because I, when, I, when I see that I turn to this like a newer generation that has a, a little bit more of an interdisciplinary approach to things and a personal approach to things and an affective approach to things that nationalism feels like it's on the wane on the black nationalist side or, or what might have um, uh, organized this conference, the spirit that organized this conference is not as, um, you know, uh, outward facing. It's more inward facing, and 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 it's fascinating to me. It feels like a fresh approach uh, to, um, on one hand. So, for instance, like you know, I, I went to Selma, uh, the bridge crossing, and I went to. Uh, all I did was go to panels with the younger people because <laughs> I, I was curious to know. And and some really great, uh, um, you know, like twenty up to thirty. They're talking about uh, how they were attacked for not wanting to vote, you know. And there were older people in the room. It's like, oh my goodness, if you don't vote, you know, this is what we're going to get. And their approach was, well, this is my political stance, uh, not voting, because I, I refuse to participate in a in in a situation where where I don't believe in either of these candidates. So I'm I'm not going to vote, and. On the surface, it's like, okay, well, if you're, if you're locked into, you gotta vote for one or two, and if you don't vote for one, you're gonna get two. That is one way of being in that system. And it felt like it opened up this, this, this the possibility of another system of, not another system, but just other possibilities of, of um, cause I was work, I was, I've been talking to a really great scholar uh, from South Africa. Um, and, and, you know, she talks about, uh, you know, or she helped me understand the possibility of implosions from the inside. You know, if you're, if you're putting out a front and engaging, you know, with, a, with the outside world, then, then the outside world uh, has an entry into your positionality that is different than if you don't put your affront out, and as opposed to it withdraw your your um, your energies and participation and rechannel that into something else. And I gotta say, that's something that's it's it's something that is probably more compelling to me personally to look at and, and pull focus on. Um, simply because there are just so many more people, you know, there's so many more young people in the world than there are that are tied up and, and voting in the, in, in the political system. So I just got my eye on that. And where nationalism you know, is, plays in that, we'll see. I just want to briefly say that, so I'm in New York now and I also live part-time in Miami. And I taught for six years at the University of Miami. So the sort of uh, the array of black nationalities um, in Miami is, looks like it does in New York, but the politics of it are very different. And so I've experienced uh, what my students have told me is called the diaspora wars, right? And so to me, this seems like another iteration, um, a sort of a, an intra-black iteration of, of the nationalism of, of people uh, thinking of themselves as divided by nationhood and of some people thinking of African Americans with a hyphen, that is people, black Americans, uh, as people without culture or people who are just American or just black as if that means no culture and that everyone else has a specific culture, um, which 
again, I would invite you to read something about, uh, about bl in black studies. Um, but I think that you're right on the money when you talk about the, the, this current moment in which the attacks from uh, from white nationalism, which if you want to talk about a movement that has grown and developed and become something incredible in the last 30 years, now that's a successful, that's a successful movement in terms of us actually talking about this on, the tra on a transnational scale today that again is not just the United States, but there are these popularist movements all over the world and in places where white folks are not even the majority. Right, and so I think that some of some, some of the political terrain has shifted uh, because many activists and scholars and, and others feel so pressured by uh, by this external threat that there may be a retrench, there may be some forms uh, some forms of re retrenchment or defense of that category, and I think objectively for good reason, not, not necessarily that that's, that's going to be the thing that frees us, but I can clearly understand. Rude, but there are other people who haven't had a chance to speak who um, need to have Black a chance to speak. With and uh, queer nations, I know that the video takes place out in South Africa, and it's questionable to see that we limit identity just to blackness when there's multiple nationalities that are present in the video, when you have Hindu, Arabs, um, uh, biracial identities that are present at these conversations, and why minimize it just to blackness when the movie documentary shows more than just African skin present? And that's when you go back to the whole nationality piece, building roots, culture, and representation of all races. So why just bring it down to blackness? I don't think the documentary does that. I, you know what, one of the things that's happened during the seven sort of uh, discussions that we've had is a very convivial, convivial discussion in which we understand that other, lots of people in the room want to have something to say. So let's go on to someone who, who we has not had something I, to say. I just want to say thank you, uh, Sherry and Jafari, for this wonderful conversation. And I think the, the, the generosity and bravery in your work really, really um, encourages and inspires, inspires many. And you know, what, just, just watching the, 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 uh, the documentary, uh, what really got me was the witnessing. Mm -hmm. The power of witnessing in those, and I know that it seems like some breakout sessions Right, and then the general conversation. And some of the thinkers in that room were, I just see them young that way, like young, right? To see like, you know, uh, all of the young, just, just, just vibrant and part of the, the kinds of intellectual communities, right? That really fed critical theory at the time. Mm -hmm. You know, because there was the whole era of structuralism, critical theory, and the way that their thinking was really helping to define that era that then fed future academics who then got tenure and then and so what, what in that particular moment, how did you feel? And this would be, how did you feel being in, in, in the midst of a sort of rare intimacy, if I can call it a rare intimacy of, of that kind of discussion uh, uh, that, that was really helping people in that, see each other in that moment? You know, there's something that you said that really resonated with how I want to approach this <laughs> answer to this, which is, uh, you know, uh, uh, the politics and the political actions and the things that I was moved to do had everything to do with the people I was talking about who I was making friends with and, um, you know, our discussions and what they wanted, they needed help with and what I needed help with. and. And it was just like, you know, and, and finding ourselves, finding spaces where we can find each other, which was really fresh and new. So it was like our social networks, like as, as a young person um, at that time, I was, I was feeling the vibrancy and activated by new friends and new conversations and, um, and a sense of like victory, even being in these spaces, you know? So there was a lot of energy uh, that, was, that was happening and 
um, you know, the, the fact that these organizers brought so, they were all, you know, it was in a university setting and they were bringing a lot of young people and really smart people and, and people that were, and at that time, you know, the, the, like a lot of young people were, were becoming particularly like trans, there wasn't a trans movement then, but at that time, trans children, you know, like being left on the piers, becoming homeless and, uh, you know, and, and, and th that energy went to like uh, reaching out to those communities, um, which put them in, in contact with further and deeper networks of even younger people, not just those, those you know, those folks, the children on the, on, the, on the piers, but it was just like children, you know, going out there and they're, and they're finding each other in those spaces. And um, so there was, uh, there, there was this feeling of, it, I wasn't, for me, I wasn't just in a bubble. I wasn't just in a bubble of blackness. I wasn't just in a bubble of queerness. All of a sudden, I got to see through the lens of, the, of my sexuality that I was able to step into a world. It was a wide, wide world. And I went to San Francisco and it was all Asian. And it was just, you know, it was, it was really energizing. And it expanded my own ability to understand who I was and the multiplicity of who I embody in myself. And yeah, it was really exciting. Yeah. I did want to echo, echo that. It's not a bubble, but a, this collectivity and the questions that, as you say, the questions that we see reflected uh, in this film are the foundational questions of critical theory, right? And so um, in my, my workshop, that again was not, no, uh, in my workshop, uh, we talked about uh, creating, uh, creating community from the inside out. But what it did was, um, and you can think, oh, it's just a conference, but it is a, it's sort of a, a linchpin in, uh, in black queer studies specifically, but critical studies more broadly. And at that time, I was a community worker um, and I had not, I wasn't thinking about uh, becoming a, a university professor. It wasn't something that seemed to me to be effective toward my, <laughs> toward my goals of working in community. And it was specifically uh, listening to and working with Jackie Alexander and Kathy Cohen in the foundation of the Audre Lorde Project that I saw what a scholar could do. So I'll just, just very briefly one day in the room and for clarity in that room were Asian people, Central Asian people, people from South Asia, there were native people uh, from, uh, from, the, from North America and from what we call Oceania, and there were black people from everywhere in the world. Are we clear on that? All in this, all in this, all in this room to create the Audre Lorde Center, all under the, all gathered by black lesbian and gay and queer people. Are you clear on that moment? Right, so that's the reality that we're talking about. And at this point, because there's so many people and so many, so many uh, points of view, there was a lot of discussion, some of it a little spicy. In walks Kathy Cohen. I didn't know her name was Kathy Cohen. I didn't know that she was an assistant professor at Yale, soon to become the first black woman to be tenured up in the ranks at Yale, which is ridiculous because it was 1990 something, right? And she said something and conceptual clarity just descended upon the land. And I thought, hmm, there could be something to this PhD thing that is different from wearing a tweed jacket with patches, although I live for a tweed jacket and patches. <laughs> uh, but this moment shifted things, not only for me, but for so many of us to see that there, there's a world in cultural institutions, in curating, in archiving, as well as in, uh, in on, the ground, on the ground health services and research that had not been explored before, that were explored only by those pioneers. And so this is one of the reasons I'm so passionate about this film this conference and obsessed with this moment. Because as you say, it is, it is not, it's, it, it is wildly uh, significant, not only to me I've learned, but to all of us who experienced that moment and to so many of my 
students who read and think about this moment and see where the concepts that they're working with were first sort of bandied about, usually not on film, usually with you know, adult beverages and with, you know, among friends and with somebody maybe taking somebody home, et cetera, et cetera. Because again, it was that era when the sexiness wasn't just about glamour, <laughs> which is, I wrote that down, I'll use it, I may cite you. Um, but the, the sexiness was about actual sex. Hello. I think I think uh, at this moment let's 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 thank let's thank uh, you know Sherry and Jafari for this really great conversation, and let's let's join them in uh, in the lobby for for a few drinks and just continue the conversation there. Okay. Yeah, thank, thank you for you. your questions. Thank you.